श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात्म ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम यू आर योगा स्टूडेंट्स सो लेट इज टॉक समथिंग अबाउट योगा Patanjali the great sage saint has composed all the details about yoga called as Patanjali Yoga Sutra you must have heard the name and <clears throat> there yoga is defined what is yoga we say yoga i was seeing here number of yoga books and the height of the yoga books i have seen was in um new zealand i was staying with someone for the first time so next to my bed they have kept some books for me just to go through in case i want to read and there was one book and it attracted my mind the name of the book was doga doga is a very peculiar name what is this book so i lifted it and saw the book was yoga for dogs <laughs> see this yoga has gone with everything yoga of painting yoga of art yoga of bluffing see so the word yoga has many aspects one meaning of the yoga is the means See, car yoga na. By the means of the car, you have come here. So yoga means means. Okay. See, um, vani yoga na. By the speech, I am communicating to you. Means. See, by the eyes, I see you. So, chakshu yoga na. so the yoga means means yoga also means uh merging like the river merges in the ocean like our vision merges in the object then only things are seen otherwise things are not seen so what is this yoga so patanjali says um yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthana yoga means what that whatever we see or experience in this world everything is experience only in the mind our body doesn't experience anything everything is experienced only by the mind see this principle i have learned few years before when one of my doctor friend took me to his clinic for operating on my big toe there was something happening there he said you must operate quickly otherwise it will be uh, not good for you so i said okay i'll get it operated he said no i will operate for you i don't want anything why she is interrupting me <coughs> this siri when you are connected with the wifi the siri if you don't do anything she says you know i am listening to you yes go ahead i don't want anything <coughs> so he took me to his clinic and operated on my toe and the operation process was he asked me to sit in a chair comfortably my leg was put on a stool 
and he gave local anesthesia to my big toe where the operation was to be conducted. After about 10-15 minutes, then he touched, he said, how are you feeling? I said, where and what? That means there was complete numb. Local anesthesia was activated. He said, now you can see your operation. And I saw in my own eyes that he has taken the sharp scalpel and next to that growth, he gave a cut. The blood came out. I had no pain, no sensation. Then he dug the scalpel inside and slowly brought it out. Complete thing came in one go. He says, Swamiji, you are lucky. In one go, everything has come out. And I had no pain. See, what is the reason? The reason was, the toe was in chemical meditation. Only toe was in meditation. So what is meditation? Meditation is that where nothing is included in the mind. See, the body was functioning, mind was in the eyes, everywhere, except in that toe. So, anything which doesn't enter the mind, doesn't exist for us. And when something enters our mind, then what happens? See? It is something like, you know, suppose this object is not here below the shawl, so it is plain. Suppose this object goes here. And I try. So there is a bulge. Because something other than the object is there, is it not? In the same manner, mind plus something else other than the mind is called as a thought. And at this point, we simply complain. Oh, my mind is too disturbed, you know, I get too many thoughts. Whenever I sit for meditation, all horrible thoughts come. We talk about it. But what is a thought? See, to understand this, take this simple example. When some thorn goes in our foot, today when we went somewhere on the seaside, and uh, after walking uh, in the um, this waters for some time. Then my feet were all filled with uh, sand, so I didn't want to use my sandals. So I was walking barefooted. And there the small, small stones were so sharp. Every time I'll put, oh God, oh, pain <laughs> there. Because other than the foot, there was something else. See, in the same manner when in the foot, other than the food, if a thorn goes, what happens? First of all, it is painful. If we don't give any attention to that, the tissue where the thorn has gone will start reacting. And the reaction is called as inflammation. And inflammation will make a swelling. And that swelling will be little bit hot, painful, and we want to get rid of it. So what we have to do? Remove the thorn, which has gone inside the tissue. If this example is clear, come back to yourself. Mind plus something. Let it be anything. So mind plus anything is called as inflammation of the mind. Mind gets inflamed. That inflamed mind is called as a thought.
and how the things enter the mind like the thorn is a solid object feet are solid so two solid things enter each other we understand but how the things enter the mind the things enter the mind when we give value to something or somebody and that creates troubles in our mind see and this value could be positive as well as negative now see here they have got a beautiful dog here now when the dog is here and you are all dog lovers so you are happy to see the dog and i am not very much fond of dogs i am fond of god <laughs> so when the dog comes to me that poor fellow expect that i will also hug and kiss and cuddle and all then i don't do that see on the contrary when the dog comes near to me i say oh god is coming again now <laughs> so you have given positive importance to that so you are happy to see the dog i have given negative importance to that i am not happy to see the dog both of us are influenced by any value that we have given to anything in this world devalue the world no thoughts give we give importance to our children we get disturbed because of them we give importance to our spouse we get disturbed because of that we give importance to cleanliness anywhere you go you will be moving with a tissue paper in your hand see so how the thoughts are born thoughts are born not after perception but after perception when the mind starts reacting to whatever is perceived the thoughts are born see so when we are told yoga means chitta vritti nirodaha means there is no thought formation the mind will be then like a mirror what is a mirror mirror is reflecting everything rejecting nothing at the same time retains nothing therefore mirror doesn't have a memory therefore mirror is always in the present and therefore mirror does not carry the load of the past now look at ourselves our mind has allowed the world to enter right from childhood onwards in the form of memories and that load of the memories is so heavy on our mind then we are unable to live in the present and as a result our mind is never in the present now observe this in day to day life suppose she tells something some experience of hers say i was coming by car and it was such a big traffic jam i never expected this time of the day and she is telling do you think i will listen to that mm -hmm. i'll cut her half way there is nothing when i was coming now who asked this <laughs> observe this 
because I am so full of the memories that anybody talks about anything, immediately my memory comes out and I start getting involved in this world. There was one old lady, she was a school inspector. Very old she was, retired, must be about 80 or so. She is no more probably now. That time I was pretty young. And she came with me for some talks. She said, uh, I want to join with you. I said, come, like uh, Jill has come with me here, or I have come with her here. So she came with me, and uh, we were staying in the same house. After my one or two talks were over, one young girl came to meet me. She said, uh, Swamiji, I have come to thank you for your nice talks. I said, oh, very good, enjoy. He said, no, I have come to thank you specially that now I have changed my mind. I actually came to my mother's place to finalize the divorce with my husband. But after listening to you for two days, three days, I understood where I had gone wrong. So now I will not opt for the divorce and I will adjust my city in my life. Therefore, I have come to thank you. I said, very good God's grace on you, live happily. Then she said, may I ask you some one or two questions, doubts I got? I said, okay, ask. She asked one question. Now she was talking to me. But that old lady who was sitting with me, any question she asked to me, she will reply. Any question. Then second question she asked. Again she replied. The third question she asked, and when she was replying, she that old young girl said, Excuse me, I have not come to talk to you. I am talking to Swamiji. I said, No, no, don't say like that. I only told her, I said, Mama, you reply on my behalf. Anyway, if you don't want, never mind. I said, Mama, get me a cup of tea, my special tea, hot water and dip dip, no milk, no sugar, and get it quickly. So I just got rid of her and afterwards she spoke to me, that girl and went away. Now this old lady got the cup of tea for me and um, said, and she said, Swamiji, I am always insulted by everybody like this. Why people treat me like this? The reason is, we don't understand, is it necessary for us to get involved in this world? There is no need. You tell me about your mother. Now I should listen and keep shut, is it not? But I will not do that. I will start about my mother. Then after I start, then he will not keep quiet. Of course, my mother also. And it becomes a mother stories. See, this is how the mind keeps on creating thoughts. And these thoughts are making us miserable. This becomes our default setting. See, another example I'll give you. There is one boy, very intelligent, extraordinary boy, hardly 22 or so, but he has completed so many things in USA and a two, three degrees and all of them private without going to college. And he got a very big job in a big bank, very prestigious bank. So I called his father for ad asking the address. Now, when I was talking to his father, he said, Dad, give it to me. He took the phone from his hand and started telling me. I heard and after I reached his house, he says, how do you have no difficulty? I say, I had all the difficulty. Why? Whom I called? Your father. What was the need for you to take the phone from your father and talk? Do you think he's dumb? He can't tell what is the address? Then his father said, Swamiji, it's good you have brought up this topic. He talks so much, so much. And he's so well read. 
the whole Wikipedia he has, you know, digested. Any topic you say in the whole universe, any topic, he cannot stop. This is because too much of garbage we have collected and we want to vomit it out. <laughs> so we find out someone. So when we understand this working of the mind, then only yoga ha chitta vritti nirodaha, what is the meaning of uh, getting rid of the thought formations in the mind, then we can start working on it. See? Therefore, what is to be done? Now let us go to the second stage. We all work by the mind and we work on the mind. When we go for our work, we um, work hard and get money and sustain our life. That is working by the body. Now you are yoga students. When you do yoga, how much money you earn? Nothing. Because you are working on the body. When we go for a walk and come back, what do we get? We don't get anything because we are working on the body. So there are two aspects. Working by the body for life sustenance and working on the body for keeping the body healthy. Now apply the same principle on mind. We are working by the mind and have we ever worked on the mind? It is very good. We should have a proper house, maintain clean, very good. We should have the proper clothing, yes, right. We should have a pop, proper figure, yes. We should have proper food, organic food. When I observe this in the world, it's a great fun for me. So I take normally, or not normally, essentially vegetarian food. So this happened in Germany. So when you are taking food, so they ask me, Samedi, you take a vegetarian, non-vegetarian? I said, no, I take vegetarian food. Then there was another lady. So you are a vegetarian? I said, yes, I am vegan. There is a style, you have to say in that style. You can't simply say, I am vegan. No, you have to say in the style. <laughs> so we take care of our food. We take care of our clothes, we take care of our house, we take care of our, of our company, we take care of our health. Very good. What we have done to take care of our mind? Our mind is like a wild horse. You can't stop it. And when we don't work on this consciously, then such people end up becoming sentimental. Keep on unnecessarily thinking. Next time you go, watch. Anywhere. Uh, you know, wherever there are so many people like railway stations, airports or public places or somebody sitting some watch. They'll be talking to themselves. We may not hear that, but you can see that. Mm. What is happening? He or she, they are talking to themselves. And such people call themselves as sentimental. I am little sentimental. So it is a preparation to become mental. Like a centimeter becomes a meter after some time. In the same manner, these sentimental people, they become mental. 
then depression, frustration, seeking attention, feeling lonely in the crowds. Because they have never, never taken care of mind. And when this mind starts persecuting us, then we start taking drinks, drugs, smoking, all these things, they are pushing the mind down. No! So as long as the impact of those drinks and drugs is operating, till then everything is so oh, beautiful, so nice. The moment that effect wanes away, again the same frustration, depression, effects. Therefore, yoga is not only body, body, body. Yoga is start working on the mind. James asked me this question. Swamiji, uh, have you been doing yoga? I said, you know, I tried my best. When I start doing even a little bit of exercise, after three, four, five days, one thought gets into my head. And the thought is, I am getting too much body oriented. All the time, body, body, body. Like those people who are too much in this yoga, yoga and body, body, even while standing also, they won't stand straight. They will be doing one or the other posture. And you are listening to somebody. Right? What is this funny kind of thing? There was one girl who organized my talks in uh, Hamburg. A very sweet girl. I still remember her name, Dana. And um, she was so good in her subject. She will chant all the Sanskrit shlokas perfectly well. She will do all the asanas so perfect scientifically. So she called me. And when I started my lecture, she was sitting on the floor. First uh, three, four minutes, she was sitting in a proper posture. After four or five minutes, she spread her two legs in a V shape. And hands going back and listening to my talk and meditation. After another five minutes, she turned and came on her belly and Bhujangasana, she was listening. <laughs> See? <clears throat> and after that was over, then again she changed the posture, lied down and listening. So after my lecture was over, I said, hey, you are doing so many good asanas. Can't you sit quiet? in one posture for one hour? What is the use that you are doing all these acrobatics? Yoga is working on the mind. See? At this moment, watch your own mind. How much you are at peace. And therefore, your breathing is very slow and shallow. There are hardly any thoughts. Only proper understanding is all that is needed. See? So, when we are practicing yoga, external things are okay, should be done, but that is not all. If you take the original definition of yoga, it is yoga chitta vritti nirodaha. We must have a perfect control over the mind. We are carried away by the mood of the mind. 
I don't have any mood now. How can you say that you don't have mood? The mind is ruling us or we should rule the mind. See? When we ride the horse, you all may be knowing horse riding, you must have done over here. So, the horse knows who knows riding and who doesn't know riding. The moment a person rides, there used to be one uh, girl here, James, uh, Tanya, and she was working in a horse stable. So after my talk was over, five, six days, she said, Ramiji, <clears throat> I don't have money to give you. I said, I didn't ask you anything. No, but how can I take everything free from you? I said, then give me a hug. Is enough. No, no. I am working in a stable and I get one guest free for horse riding in a month. So this month I have saved it for you. So you come. So that time I changed my this attire, put on the shoes and the pants and all that and had such a nice ride on the horse. So when I rode on that horse, she said, did you do earlier horse riding? I said, I must have done, but many, many years now, more than 50, 60 years before. Oh, the horse knows that you have been riding earlier. That is why he didn't trouble you. Otherwise, the moment a novice sits on the horse, he knows, he'll start, you know, playing. So the horse will ride on us, rather we riding on the horse. Exactly the same way. Whether we are riding on the steed of the horse uh, or the steed of the mind or the mind is riding on us. Think. And this happens only because of one thing. Nobody ever taught us. Let it be parents, let it be teachers, let it be society, let it be the psychiatrist, let it be anyone, nobody even mentioned in our life that we have to work on our mind. We go to the temples and churches. We ask for everything. See? One day I went to one temple in India very famous temple, millions of people visit there and a huge queue and the queue is in a seven-storied building. There will be about uh, more than about 50, 60,000 people that can stand in the queue. It goes up and comes down and in between there are tea stalls, there are toilets and everything, you know, such a huge crowd around the year. So when I go, because they know me, I get a shortcut. I don't go through the queue. So there were two, three people with me. We went and did namaste quickly and went out. So they gave me one coconut and one garland. After we came out, one person asked me, Swamiji, they allow you to stay there for a longer time, but you just did like this and went out. And we want to stay there for a longer time, but they push us because there is such a big queue. Why? I said, look here. Longer the prayer before the God, longer is the list of demands. Shorter the prayer, short is the list of demands. Then what about you? I said, why should I tell you? No, 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 please tell us. We'll also do the same thing. I said, you have to do it definitely? Yes. I said, I always ask only for one thing from the Lord. Oh Lord, let there be no hatred, bitterness, jealousy, ill feelings towards anybody, anything, anywhere, even in the dream, even for fun, even once in my life. Ask this thing to the Lord. See? We 
whenever we give any importance to anything, for example, you hate somebody, that hatred will keep us killing throughout life. I was invited in somebody's house for dinner in Bombay. And that person told me, Swamiji, um, I'll come and pick you up, pick you and you alone have to come. Nobody should come with you. I said, okay, no problem. Normally there are two, three people, so they go. Then after going to his house, he told me, Swamiji, I told you don't to, uh, not to get anybody with you because that person who was with you, I don't want him to come to my house. I hate him. Therefore, I specifically told don't get anybody. So I laughed. He said, why are you laughing? I said, when you cut a joke, you must laugh, is it not? You want a joke here? I said, you hate him so much that you don't want him in your house. But he is in your heart. Where is the hatred? Hatred is not outside. Hatred is inside. And then we complain, mind is too disturbed. The world enters our mind in the form of importance, positive or negative. Positive importance is called as likes, negative importance is called as the dislikes. Whatever we have given importance to, we have to delete that. Is anybody born with the cigarette in the mouth and the lighter in the hand? How they learn and become addicted to smoking? They will justify it. Peer pressure, I like it, it is relieving, it is freshening. This is all we have given importance to. Therefore, once we are clear, yoga means we have to start working on the mind. See, now the next step, very important step. We talk two times. One, when we talk to others. And second, when we talk to ourselves. See? Now, when we talk to others, what do we talk? We talk about our past. I was there, I was here. I had done this thing, I had done that thing. And the total burden of the past is constantly being repeated. See? Now be very attentive. Past belonged to the body, not to us. All the old people make a pathetic joke. One old man met me somewhere and he asked me, Can you guess me, guess what is my age? So I, I like playing fool with the people. Good time pass. So I looked at him. I said, You must be three years old because such a question. No grown-up person can ask. No, 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 please tell me, what is my age? What do you think I am? Then I told him, you are 81 years young. When I said 81 years young, not old, he nearly jumped out of his skin and he said, you are the right and the first person who has correctly assessed my age. Although I am 81 years, but I don't feel I am old. And you say 81 years young. Now be attentive. 81 years belong to the body. And who is talking? The mind. Mind never becomes old. Because time is a concept of mind. When we go to sleep, 
sleep for six hours. You don't know you are sleeping for six hours. And when we get up, then we look into the watch. Oh God, six hours I was sleeping. See, mind is never influenced by time. So, when we keep on talking about our past, what happens is, we are holding on to this body, body, body. Today, one girl wrote me about something. That Swamiji, is this right thinking? Am I going on the right path? I said, look here, my dear. You are unable to drop the reference of the body. Try to talk or think without reference to your body. Try. You cannot think. You cannot talk. The moment the body reference is dropped, as we do in dream and in deep sleep. Therefore, in deep sleep, who are we? Man, woman, young, old, husband, wife, brother, father, mother, sister? None. We are nobody. But we are still there. We are not dead. And when we remain nobody, no thoughts, no thoughts, all happiness. That is why people snore in deep sleep, because they are happy. Whenever you are happy, we make noise, is it not? So, the one who is in really deep sleep, he will snore. And you know, those who snore, they are never uh, in a hurry. Then don't snore. Kar, 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 kar. No, no, no. Very comfortably. And the other one who is not able to sleep gets more disturbed. Because he is miserable. And this one who is sleeping, he is happy. Because he is nobody. Nobody has no thoughts. And whenever there are thoughts, now be attentive, at the root of every thought, there is a seed of somebody. Do this simple, small experiment for a few moments. Just become uh, husband, wife, mother, father, whatever. And see what thoughts are coming in your mind. Stop. Now become nobody. Stop. Now let us analyze these small, cute exper experiments. When we became mother, thoughts were pertaining to children. When we became wife, thoughts were pertaining to the husband. When we became husband, thoughts were pertaining to the wife. But when we are nobody, no thoughts. So we have to recognize this. Whenever you are disturbed, immediately pinpoint who is disturbed. Then you will come to know that there is somebody who is disturbed. Then find out, is this somebody real? I as a husband is disturbed. Now, whether I as a man is real or I as a husband is real. Can the husband exist without the man? 
and can the man exist without becoming a husband? Think. Then we will come to know that we are essentially man, we became husband. So man is the reality, not the husband. Therefore, what is to be done? Take life lightly. Don't become serious in life. See? One day, one man went home and he knocked the door and the wife opened the door and he lifted her with both hands and was going toward the dining table. So the wife asked, how come your Swamiji was romantic or what in the lecture? You are coming from the lecture and lifting me like this? What happened to you? No, he was not romantic. Then he told me, you must carry your burden. <laughs> Don't take life too seriously. And whenever you are light, you are in the present. Observe this phenomena in your own mind. Another small experiment. 287 days before, at 9 o'clock, what did you eat? Okay, second experiment. After 197 days, where will you be at 5 o'clock? In both these experiments, you will start struggling. 285 days, no, 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 no. Or after 197 days, no, no, no. struggle started. Now, in the present, if you have to remain, Remain in the present. What struggle is there? There is no struggle, no effort. Whenever we go in the past or in the future, struggle begins. Wherever there is struggle, there is a tiredness. There is frustration. Where there is no struggle, no tiredness, all happiness. See, this is the meaning of asana according to Patanjali. Sthira Sukham Asanam Effortlessly happy. And how the happiness can come? The second sutra tells, Prayatna Shaitilya, our life should be free from struggle. Relax. Whatever has to be done, do it cheerfully and happily. What we do, whatever we do, we do it to get happiness. Don't do anything to get happiness. Do everything to express happiness. Walk happily. You will not be tired. Talk happily. You will not be tired. See? But our idea is, whatever we do, if I do this thing, then I will get that thing, then I will be happy. So what we are doing unknowingly, we are postponing our happiness in the future period of time. Isn't it? Now all those who get married, by God's grace, I am single. See, all those who get married, for what people get married? For becoming miserable or for becoming happy? See? So we get married for becoming happy. On the contrary, if you marry happily, then there is no problem. See, similarly, 
we eat so that we will be happy. On the contrary, eat happily over. And this happy disposition is prayatna shaitilya is lesser the efforts, happier you are. More the efforts, miserable you are. Anywhere. See? For example, give yourself a lot of choice. You will be always miserable. Give yourself minimum choice. See? Like I give my example, I put on this dress. Whether I go to toilet, I go to temple, I go to prayer, I go for dinner, I go for funeral, I go for marriage. No change. Only same kind of clothes. No struggle. Are you people? Oh, I had to go for that meeting. I had to go for a marriage. I had to go for a funeral. I had to go for taking birth. How many choices? More the choice, more miserable. Lesser the choice, less miserable. No choice, all happiness. <coughs> In this way, when we start working on our mind, then we have really entered the yoga. And the yoga is nothing but let us allow the inherent bliss to express through every expression of life. Through the body, it is the work. Through the mouth or speech, it is the talk. Through the mind, it is the thinking. These through channels, the through these three channels, we express our life. So whatever we have to do physically, whatever it may be, it must express joy. Otherwise, we do the thing, oh God, I don't do this again. Neither you enjoy nor others enjoy. Better don't do it. Reject. But we are average people like the, our condition is like what? Like the air hostesses. There are three options for any action that we can do. Number one, you don't want to do it, reject it. No. Over. Second option, do it cheerfully, happily. Third option, aerostress option. When you enter the plane, welcome. <laughs> but inside, boiling. <laughs> so, we externally, we show, we are accepting, but internally, there is a revolt. That result is acidity. See, therefore, it is necessary for us that every action must express happiness. Every word that we utter, that we talk, must be spoken happily. And when you are in a happy mode, you see something good. And when we are in a bad mood, then the good things are forgotten. Only the bitterness comes out. See? Then through the mind, if we are happy, we will be creative. Happiness is a creative force. It is not a destructive force. A happy person can never be destructive. See? Just imagine this example I have given a number of times. Very simple example. Suppose I go and tell my girlfriend, I don't have one. So I can tell this example very openly. Suppose I go and tell my girlfriend, Honey, darling, I am so happy today. I tell you, I just want to cut you into small pieces. 
will it ever happen a happy person cannot be destructive so what is yoga therefore yoga is that life where only bliss expresses through us and not blisters therefore yoga chitta vritti nirodaha when we just take care of our mind and the thoughts through understanding and wisdom then tada drashtuh swarupe avasthanam means then our inherent bliss will start expressing through us like the flowers the flowers do not give fragrance they have fragrance the sun doesn't give light and energy it has light and energy in the same manner we don't have to give happiness to others we are happiness see and will the flower ever bother nobody has come to take my fragrance you know i am going waste no see let us be happy all the time and let us not find out the reason to be happy many times it happens we ask somebody hey come on what the problem with you today you are so happy so when somebody is happy we are surprised when somebody is miserable we are now oh, it's always like that see let us not find out why somebody or why i should be happy no why i shouldn't be happy and to be happy is to live at zero complaint level no complaints about anything anybody in this world and for that what we have to do what cannot be cured should be endured no 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 should be enjoyed conversion of endurance into enjoyment is yoga otherwise we will keep on suffering inside and that will destroy our own life therefore friends yoga as you are all practicing whatever you are doing is perfectly right but that is not all you have to take the next step the next step is start working on the mind so with the other people when we are talking before we talk ask a question to yourself is it necessary to talk i guarantee you in 99% cases we will get an answer there no need but we keep on talking i'll give an example <clears throat> this happened in some uh, temple in himalayas i was sitting in the morning 8 o'clock 9 o'clock with a cup of tea very bright sun extremely cold about 18000 feet to- uh, height and there were about a dozen people standing or sitting around me and i was sitting in a chair one person from nowhere came <clears throat> and he told everybody excuse me excuse me excuse me they thought he knows me he came and stood in front of me and he said uh, i am so and so i have got two sons one is in usa one is in canada and i am staying in delhi but now i am in a hurry i am going thank you and went away who asked <laughs> then they asked me sami ji do you know him i said i don't know him then why did he tell him tell you all these things i said i don't know you ask him how many things we talk uncalled for and second thing the most important and the most simple stop talking to yourself
it will not happen overnight. Start with a small dose. 10 seconds, don't talk to yourself. In a day, 10-15 times we can try this, anywhere, even while you are sitting on the commode. See, it is possible, is not it possible? How much energy we waste in unwanted thinking? This is a little bit calculation for understanding. Eight hours of physical work, energy consumption is equal to one hour of talk, energy consumption. Eight hours of talk is equal to 15 minutes of unwanted thinking and how much we are thinking. All our energy is gone like our battery of the phone gets discharged in no time and when there is a need there is no enthusiasm, there is no alertness, there is no inspiration. Then we drag through life. Therefore, it's two things. Before we talk to others, ask a question, is it necessary to talk? And second thing, stop talking to yourself. Try this and be happy. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnahat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Yonamaha Hari Om